Well, good evening to each and every one of you. My name is Matt Yon. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet, I'm the senior pastor here at St. John's. Uh, this is uh, service number four for me today. So uh, if I forget something, bear with me. I might be confused whether it's morning or evening, but I'm so glad to be with you this evening. A couple things that you'll need for, the, for tonight besides yourself being present here at worship. Make sure you have a, a program tonight or a bulletin, your hymnal, and you, of course, are going to need one of these as well. So I hope that you have all three of those. If not, one of the ushers will be more than happy to provide that for you. But I just want to wish each and every one of you a, a Merry Christmas. I hope that this is a highlight of your Christmas evening and your Christmas celebrations as a family. And I just appreciate you being present with us here tonight. With that said, if we can bow for a moment of prayer, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we are truly grateful that we've come together in the fellowship that we know as St. John's to worship you in spirit and truth. And for each and every person that's here tonight, whether they're in person or online, we give you thanks for their life, for the ways that they love you and the ways that they serve you in this community. And for all of us tonight, may we be open to your spirit's leading to show us what it means to be Emmanuel, God with us, in essence, a little Christ child born so long ago for each of our sakes. May we receive that message with joy this evening, and more than anything else, may we worship you fully. We ask all these things tonight in Jesus' name, and all God's people do say, amen.
Would you remain standing and join with me in our Christmas affirmation found in your bulletin? We believe the spirit of Christmas, for it is the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose birth it celebrates. We believe in the light of Christmas, for the remind us of Christ, who is the light of the world. We believe in giving gifts at Christmas, for it is in keeping with the greatest gift the world has ever known. We believe in being childlike at Christmas, for Jesus said we must come, children, to enter the kingdom of heaven. We believe in the angels' songs about on earth, among all persons of good will. For when our wills are good, as they are at Christmas, we feel the peace and joy in our hearts that is unlike anything else in all the world. It is the peace and joy of God. Amen. You may be seated. First Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope. We light it again tonight as a reminder, Jesus, who was born Christ and King, and we remember that he will come again to fulfill all of the God's promises to us. The second Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. Today, we light it again as we remember Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, has come as Savior and Redeemer. Christ came out of love to bring peace to all of God's creation. The third Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. When Gabriel told Mary that this child would be born to her, Mary was filled with joy. And in her truest joy, she sang a song, The Magnificent, with these words, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Earlier this morning, we lit the candle of love. You see, God comes to us in Jesus to show his perfect love. And so the fourth candle, the candle of love, reminds us that Jesus brings us God's love and shows us how to love others. And tonight we light the final candle, the Christ candle. It is in the order center of three, surrounded by the other candles to symbolize the Christ's presence in our world. In the Gospel of Matthew, we read, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Friends, the long-awaited Messiah has arrived. He has come to dwell among his people and is truly God with us. Now would you join me in prayer in praying the prayer that is printed in your bulletin? God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thank you for touching all heaven and splendor. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. 
every corner of our hearts. Shine this night with your grace. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to join me down front. excited? A little bit excited or a lot excited? Yeah, you could scream that loud. Well, I'm glad you're keeping it on the inside. So we have been opening a present every Sunday in Advent to represent our candles. So what candle did we just light? The Christ candle. So what do you think could be in the box to represent Christ? Um, a, a cross. A cross? Maybe. Any other guesses? What represents Christ to you? Baby Jesus. A manger. That's a good guess. A bottle. <laughs> what do you think? A nativity scene? Those are really good guesses. Should we open it up and see what we've got? All right, let's open it up. Here, I think we can slide. There we go. A candle. What is it? A candle. A candle. A candle. We have a candle because Christ brought light into the world. Christ is the light of the world. And in this service, we're going to have a special message from Pastor Matt. And then we're all going to have communion together where everyone is invited to the table. And then we're going to sing a song. And before the song, Pastor Matt is going to take light from that candle. And we're all going to pass our light around. Because Jesus was born many, many nights ago, we all have the light of Christ with us. So the lights are going to go dark. And we're all going to hold our lights. Because the light is here. And the darkness did not overcome it. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to teach us about your love and how to shine your light in the world. Help us to be that light tonight and every day. We love you. Amen. All right. Thank you, friends. You can head back to your parents, and I hope you all have a wonderful sleep tonight. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you again for being here tonight. Would you pray with me? We come to adore you, O oh little one, on bended knee, with hopeful heart, and eyes stretched wide with wonder and awe. The gentleness of your gaze, 
draws us into the majesty and the mystery of all that lies beyond. And in that place of falling into joy, yield all that we are to you. And we pray, O oh God, for those who are broken, those who seek, the trembling and rumbling tummies, the haggard spirits, and the ragged lives. For those who cling to the last best thing, and those whose hearts pine for love. Bless us, O Lord, whom we adore, and turn our faces ever toward you. For peace, for mercy, for the sake of all that is holy, we come to adore you, O Christ, our Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Well, friends, it's here. Ready or not, it's time to celebrate Jesus' birth. It's the night. Family, food, hope, peace, joy, love, giving, abounding. So let us be generous here and now. Let us each give a financial gift as we share the good news of Christ's birth. The ushers will come by shortly, passing the trays among you. There is a QR code in your bulletin. If you want to scan that, it'll take you to our Push Pay app, and you can pay that way. You can uh, send a check through the U.S. mail, or you can drop it off uh, next week uh, here at the church. But whatever way you wish to give this evening, thank you for all of your love for this church and your abundant giving.
Our gospel lesson tonight comes from Luke chapter 2. It's a very familiar verse of scripture for each and every one of us. Would you stand for the gospel reading? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. It was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living in the, out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all people everywhere. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace to all men who his favor rest. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and ba the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured all these things up in her heart and pondered them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they were told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We're in the most wonderful time of year where we begin to celebrate what God has done in and through our life, and ultimately we get to exchange gifts. Now, I don't know about what the person was thinking when they gave me this wonderful Christmas gift. This beautiful Christmas tie, some of you are in the envy of this beautiful tie. But there's one added bonus to this tie that you just couldn't, money could not buy. It plays a wonderful little song. Can y'all hear that? And maybe I'll get it to cut off. There we go. It might not cut off. I might be handing it to somebody. There we go. Now, after this service, I'll be auctioning this tie for 100 bucks. So if you want it, it's yours. But sometimes we get those gifts, do we not, at Christmas time? Those gifts where we say, well, you really shouldn't have, right? And this would be in one of those categories. We get one of those gifts that we decide, well, what am I going to do with them? Am I going to hold on to it? Am I going to re-gift it or just set it aside for a time? I hope tonight that this won't be a time where you just set the gift aside that God offers so freely to each of us through your, our Son and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Tell you another story from one of my favorite Christmases long ago when I was seven years of age. That's been just a little bit of time. When I was seven years of age, I wanted something more than anything else in all the world. It's almost to the level, if you've seen the Christmas story movie of the Red Rider BB gun, some of y'all are young enough to remember that particular movie. But I wanted the G.I. Joe Jeep with the soldier. Now, for some of you, you're like, who in the world is G.I. Joe? Just ask your parents or your grandparents. They'll be able to tell you. But that particular year, at seven years of age, I wanted that gift more than anything else. Well, my grandfather that I dearly love and, and miss to this day was the one that provided that gift for me. And I began to rip open the package like most boys do, not paying attention to a whole lot. I ripped open the package. I got the, the G.I. Joe Jeep out. I got the soldier out. And it didn't matter what else happened that night, if I can be honest with you, because all I wanted to do was play with that particular gift and enjoy it fully as a child. But I looked over at my grandfather, and he looked one of those looks like sometimes you get in worship services when you're not doing the right thing or you're not sure exactly what, what you've done wrong. And I, I look at him and I say, what's wrong? And he just looks at me for a moment. So I go over and I talk to him and say, Grandfather, what is going on? Granddad, what's going on? He said, you missed something, son. And so I went digging back through the box and all the paraphernalia I just unwrapped. 
And on the back of the, the package, the G.I. Joe Jeep was an envelope. It had been taped in place, and I, I opened the envelope, and I realized there was no money in it, but there was a piece of paper. And I began to pull out the piece of paper and opened it up, and on the top line, on the particular piece of paper, it said, College Fund for Matt. Because my grandfather saw the importance of having an education. And what the next cool thing about the piece of paper on there, if you looked about midway down, was the amount it took him to go to all four years of college at the University of South Carolina. The only university in South Carolina, by the way. <laughs> and it was the entire amount that, uh, that it took him to go to college that he had set aside for an education for his grandson, not knowing that he, his grandson would eventually get a master's degree on top of a bachelor's degree. So tonight I ask you, what is the greatest gift that you've ever received for Christmas? And for most of us, if we're honest, we, we can name a particular situation or a particular item that we received. But I don't want you to rush through this Christmas and Advent season realizing that God's got a greater gift for you tonight. We've rushed from place to place in this season of Christmas. And tonight I want you to just take a moment to think about what God has done through, for you through Jesus Christ. Because it's easy to be a little bit jaded by Christmas. Sometimes we get caught up in the nostalgia of whether we're going to get a PlayStation 5, an Xbox, an iPad, or some other electronic gear. Those are all great and, and short-lived. But tonight I hope that you'll hear the overarching message of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now there's some interesting characters within the context of our Bible story tonight. There are those wonderful shepherds that are in the story. Did you see them there? They were the third shift shepherds, folks. They were the least desirable group. No offense to anybody that's ever worked the third shift. But they were the, the shepherds that had the night shift to cover the sheep. They were not the desirables. You wouldn't invite them to your Christmas dinner tonight or your Christmas lunch or dinner tomorrow night because the family silver might disappear. Things that you saw as valuable might just walk out the door with them. They were not considered safe people in society. But what's so interesting about the story that we see of these third shift shepherds is in essence, God came to them and gave them the greatest story that's ever been told of great joy for all people everywhere. And what did they do? They ran and saw the great sight. Now, for some of us, we miss the, the part of the story that this was the middle of the night, folks. It would be an awe-inspiring moment to have an angel appear before you and then a what? A glorious group of angels appear and make the, the night as bright as day. You think, they, you think God got their attention? Absolutely. What about us tonight? Are you willing to see what God's got in store for you? In Emmanuel, God is with us. Because the shepherds, what did they do? They immediately left the fields where they were working. And they began to worship the God Almighty. Born in a little tiny baby in a manger so long ago. Now for some of us, we are joy-filled knowing that we have a gift tomorrow. We're joy-filled knowing that Santa may be on the way tonight. And we're joy-filled from the understanding that God cares about each and every one of us. Do you receive the great news of great joy for all people everywhere as if it's the first time tonight? Because you've noticed Mary and Joseph received the shepherds openly and willingly. And God tonight through Jesus Christ receives each and every one of you willingly and openly. He wants a relationship with you that's real and personal. He wants to share the joy of a table fellowship with you. And tonight, I'm reminded every time I say the litany, you know, within the communion liturgy, where heaven and earth, holy, holy are you, we join the unending hymn that we're worshiping with those that have gone on to be with Jesus. I'd give anything tonight, folks, to be with my grandfather, to sit and have a meal with him one more time. But the good thing about it is we know that if we believe in Jesus Christ, that we'll forever be with him. And all those folks that have gone and finished their course in faith, we can be with them again. Isn't that awesome? 
Well, there's another cool thing about the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey likes to say. Some of you are young enough to remember. You looked at the very bottom of the piece of paper, and on that piece of paper, my grandfather and his chicken scratch of an 80-something-year-old man wrote, paid in full. His goal was for his grandson not to have any debt for, for college and for the bill to be paid in full. And tonight, Jesus Christ has done just that for your life. He has paid the full sacrifice of his life in order for us to have life and have life abundantly. That means no matter who shows up at the dinner table tonight, tomorrow for lunch, or the, tomorrow night, that we're to love them and offer them joy and peace. Because Christ forgive, forgave each and every one of us fully on the cross. And tonight we celebrate a baby born in the midst of us, but it's a bigger story than that. It's a story where God loves you so much that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Tonight the invitation is simple. Will you celebrate and participate in that joy of the Christ child being born in a manger? Will you receive that with the joy of that is intended, the joy of heaven that's so freely offered for each of us here this evening. I'm going to offer you an invitation tonight. If you feel so led, I'm going to say a prayer. For some of us, we've never given our life to Jesus Christ. Let this night be that night for you. Maybe it's a night where you've been far away from God and you need to experience his love, grace, and mercy in your life tonight. Or maybe you just need to say, Jesus, I need the joy of heaven again tonight in this simple story told so long ago. No matter where you find yourself tonight, will you pray this prayer with me, knowing full well that God will meet you here and will encounter you and love you forever. Let us pray. You can pray this with me if you feel so led. Jesus, I come to you like the shepherds and the magi did so long ago. I accept you as my King, my Savior, and my Lord. Forgive me for the ways that I've turned from your path and help me to follow you fully. Save me from myself and help me to live for you. I receive you this evening, Jesus Christ, and believe in your name. And make me a child and bring me your joy. Help me to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. In your name I pray, Jesus my Christ, my Lord, and my Savior, and all of God's people say, Amen.
Will you please stand? If you'll join me in the great thanksgiving this print in your bulletin and respond in the bold print. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of the darkness and brought forth light on earth. You formed each of us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And you delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of the stable, Jesus was born. And so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And so... As your word became flesh, born of a woman on the night so long ago, and on the night in which he gave himself up for each of us, he took bread, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church today, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, may we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Tonight we'll be receiving communion by intinction. A server will give you a piece of bread, and they will say to you, This is the body of Christ given for you. And then another server will extend a cup to you and say, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. And so as you receive communion tonight, a piece of bread will be broken off and you dip it in the cup. I'm going to ask those who agree to uh, serve this evening if they'll come forward at this time. Won't you please come?
This evening is one of my favorite times in the Christmas Eve service. It's where we light, see the light of Christ, and we carry it forth into the world. So tonight, as you receive the light of Christ from one of the ushers that will bring the light to you, ask if your candle is unlit, that you extend it this way. And as soon as yours is lit, then you can light the next person. We're going to sing all four verses of Silent Night. As the fourth verse is sung, I ask you to extend your candle upwards and uh, just be in the moment. Don't let it escape too quickly this evening. Would you please stand?
you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful that we've been in your presence tonight, that we celebrate the Christ child, Emmanuel, God with us. And as we go forth singing joy to the world, may that joy be made complete in us tonight. And may we share that joy with each and every person that we have around the table in the days that are to come. We give you thanks for allowing us to worship so fully tonight. May we experience your peace, your glory, and most of all, your presence. It's in Jesus' name I do pray, and all of God's people do say, Amen. Merry Christmas. Go in peace.